Welcome to part 3 of Destiny 2 Forsaken, everything we know. I'll be going over exotics in this video as well as giving you guys 7 tips for what I feel you should do before you actually start playing as well as announce the winner of the Destiny 2 Forsaken contest. And we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here and welcome to Guardian Watcher. So today I wanted to do part 3 about everything we know so far about Forsaken before it is released as well as give you guys a few tips before starting your adventure in Destiny 2 Forsaken. If you haven't seen part 1 or part 2 then I will put them in the description as well as at the end of this video. But before we get into the video I would like to thank each and every one who has actually participated in the Destiny 2 Forsaken contest as well as announce the winner. Drum roll, please. And the winner is going to be announced at the end of this video. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you gotta admit, that was a little funny. Warning, if you do not want any type of spoilers for Forsaken, then you have three seconds to leave this video. You have been warned. Since there is a lot of information I might not get into everything, but The Forsaken is releasing later on today and I will put out more videos as soon as I get the information. As promised, we will start with the weapons first. As we all know, there will be tons and tons of new weapons and armor coming to Forsaken. Prior to the release of Forsaken, there were three weapons that we were actually able to get that were Forsaken weapons. One is an auto rifle called Ether Doctor, then we have a shotgun called Dusk Rock Blues, and an SMG called Trackless Waste. I ended up getting the auto rifle with armor piercing rounds, Zen Moment, and Rampage. And as of the recording of this video, I only had the pleasure of bringing it in PvE, and it is ridiculous. It is crazy stable, and it melts enemies like it's cool. Next, let's get into something a little bit more interesting in Forsaken, starting with exotic weapons, and then exotic armor for each class. The first exotic weapon that we are going to be going over is called Cerberus Plus One. It's an auto rifle, and thanks to the four-headed dog perk, it fires a rapid burst of bullets in a cone ahead of you. The spread shot package perk then lets you ADS to focus the spread shot for more accuracy. The next exotic is called Wish Ender. This is an exotic bow that allows the user to see enemies through walls while ADSing, thanks to its intrinsic perk, Queen's Wrath. The Broadhead perk allows the arrow to overpenetrate and damage the targets on both entry and exit. Now the next exotic is called the Trinity Ghoul, and I actually went over this exotic in the last video, but this bow shoots arrows that split after firing due to the split electron perk. The Lightning Rod perk gives chain lightning to the next shot after a precision kill. It also has three arrows instead of one. 1000 Voices is a heavy fusion rifle and it has a perk called Ahamkara's Eye that allows players to charge a continuous explosive beam. The Unforeseen Repercussions perk superheats targets and causes a delayed explosion. Now, one of the new exotic hand cannons coming to Forsaken is called Malfacence. This hand cannon's explosive shadow perk creates an explosion after hitting the same enemy five times. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm using a hand cannon, I pretty much wanna kill an opponent in like three headshots. This gun's Taken Predator perk deals bonus damage to both Taken enemies and invading guardians during the new Crucible game mode Gambit. And a blast from the past brings us to the Ace of Spades hand cannon from Destiny 1. However, this Ace of Spades is ridiculously way better than the Destiny 1 version. The Memento Mori perk gives some bonus damage bullets if you reload after a kill. The radar will also stay active when you ADS and it will also have the iconic Firefly perk, not Dragonfly, which precision kills create an explosion of solar energy. Oh my Jesus. I definitely can't wait to get my hands on this gun. Another returning exotic from D1 is the QBB or Queen Breaker's Bow. It's a heavy linear fusion rifle and with the wire rifle perk it allows the gun to fire a long range precision arc bolt that blinds enemies on contact. You can switch between marksman and combat sights 
for either long or short range combat. The next exotic weapon is a very interesting one and it's called Two-Tailed Fox. And it is an exotic rocket launcher that fires two rockets at once, one solar and one void. One of its perks is called Play With Your Prey, and this perks makes the solar rocket do dot damage or damage over time, while the void rocket suppresses enemies. And we also have two returning exotic shotguns from D1 called the Chaperone and the Lord of Wolves. The Chaperone has Precision Slug, a single shot slug that deals massive damage, the Roadborne perk boosts handling, range, and precision damage after a precision kill. And as for the Lord of Wolves, kills with the Shrapnel Launcher perk triggers the Release the Wolves perk, which doubles the number of projectiles per burst for a short time. And the last two exotics are new to Destiny 2. The Black Talon is a void exotic sword that is similar to Destiny 1's Bolt Caster. The Crow's Wing perk allows you to launch a combo that sends a blast of void energy flying through the air. The Tireless Blade perk grants sword ammo from powered sword kills. And that's definitely going to be way useful in PvE. Wave Splitter is the void version of the Cold Heart and the Prometheus lens. However, thanks to the Harmonic Laser perk, it has, it has different beam intensities which change while the trigger is held down. The supercharged battery perk makes it so collecting an orb of light grants a period of maximum power that kicks off with an automatic reload. Now that just sounds like it's going to be like OP in PvE and PvP. Hopefully it doesn't turn into the Prometheus lens like when it first came out. So now that the exotic weapons are out of the way, let's briefly talk about exotic armor. Now each class, the Hunter, Titan, and Warlock all get four new pieces of exotic armor with the Forsaken. And we are going to start with the Warlock. And we have the Chromatic Fire. It is an exotic chest piece which on precision kills will cause explosions of the element of your current subclass. Phoenix Protocol is also an exotic chest piece that grants super energy for any kill or assist made while standing in your Well of Radiance. Controverse Hold are exotic gauntlets for void walkers which when using one of the grenade abilities either devour chaos accelerant or radioactive this will grant damage resistance and charged grenade hits will return a random amount of grenade energy geomag stabilizers are exotic boots while you have chaos reach equipped sprinting will help top off a player's super energy if it's almost full while using chaos reach any damage dealt with the super will extend its duration. Now, let's go over all of the Titan exotics, starting with the Heart of Inmost Light. It's an exotic chest piece that focuses on synergy. While using grenade, melee, or barricade abilities, this exotic increases damage and resistance. While it's buffed, the next ability used has a faster regen. Ursa Furiosa, Jesus, that sounds like something that came out of Harry Potter. Ursa Furiosa! <laughs> oh, sorry. These exotic gauntlets let you move faster while guarding with your Sentinel Shield. Guarded damage converts to super energy after your super expires. One Eyed Mask is a very interesting exotic for Titans. And this is an exotic helmet. And when you are damaged while wearing this exotic, that enemy is marked, and when they are defeated, you gain increased damage and an overshield. Now, the last exotic four titans are called Antaeus Ward, and they are exotic boots. And these exotic boots allow titans to reflect incoming projectiles when you are sliding. So this means rockets, grenade launchers, sleep arounds, or anything of the sort. Last but not least is the Hunter. The first exotic for the Hunter is the Gweeson Vest, which is an exotic chest piece that gives super energy for each Spectral Blades kill made before going into stealth. The sixth coyote or coyote is another exotic chest piece which gives you an additional dodge. Oath Keeper are exotic gauntlets that make the bow charge faster and hunters can hold the bow charge indefinitely. Shards of Galanor are also exotic gauntlets for gunslingers and each hit or kill will return super energy after the super ends. Now I want to give you guys a few tips prior to actually playing Forsaken because leveling is going to be a huge thing especially since the level cap is increased. 
The new level cap as of the Forsaken release will be 50 and the power level will be 600. Now, these tips will be very, very helpful if you want to be able to do the Last Wish raid when it is released on September 14th. Tip number one. If you haven't already emptied your inventory prior to the Forsaken launching, then go ahead and do that when you first get into the tower. You should keep at least one to three weapons in each slot as well as armor. Now, we will be getting a lot of blues, so you definitely want to make room for them in your inventory. That way, you don't have to keep going back and forth to the Postmaster. So, just dump everything that you're not going to use into the vault. Tip number two. While you are at the tower, go ahead and talk to all of the vendors and grab any bounties they have. This will help with the leveling process, and especially go to Hawthorne because she does have clan bounties. Tip number three. Check your Triumphs in the Triumphs tab to see if anything has already been completed. Now, we aren't sure yet, but we may be able to get experience from completing Triumphs. Tip number four. Don't just blow all of your Vanguard and Crucible tokens before you hit a soft cap. Wait until after you get over the soft cap and then continue to level. Tip number five. Doing the story is not, I repeat, is not the best way to level up. What you want to do is hit the soft cap first by doing heroic public events, probably on Earth, since they spawn a lot faster. Either heroic public events, the flashpoints, any of the milestones. And then after you reach the soft cap, then go ahead into the story. The reason being is because after you complete the story, you will be rewarded with powerful gear, and this powerful gear will help pull you over the soft cap. While doing the heroic public events or any of the milestones, look for patrols and do them at the same time as well. Tip number six, collect all of the planetary materials and chest at each location that you can find. These materials will help dramatically to infuse your weapons and possibly armor while playing Forsaken. And tip number seven, Pop any Vanguard or Crucible Boom that you have as well as three of coins while playing specific activities. The boons will stack up to two times so you and a friend can both pop one each. If you have an experience boost, go ahead and pop those as well. In addition to this, turn in all your bounties when you have those boons active because it'll give you a boost in experience. Now one thing I want you guys to remember is do not overextend yourself. Stock up on drinks, snacks, etc. and get some rest. This game isn't going to go anywhere, so it definitely is important that you guys keep up with your health. And don't forget to eat a real meal, okay? Real meal. That was just something extra. It wasn't an actual tip. So, as I had said earlier, I was going to announce the winner of the Destiny 2 Forsaken. So, the winner of the Destiny 2 Forsaken is Alexis Fantuzzi. So I would definitely contact her in order to get her the free code for Destiny 2 Forsaken. However, thanks to the help from my sponsors, I will be doing a lot more giveaways in the coming weeks. So stay tuned to the channel for those. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to watch these videos as well. You never know, you just might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more, because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time.